it's just the store brand of uh, like Crystal Light. You just add to water. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get off soda again, so I am still drinking Zevia. Uh, but I wanted something like cold, and none of my Zevias are cold. So I went with the, the water additive, and it's fruit punch. So my lips are going to get real red here. It already, it already kind of looks like I have lipstick on. I just love the fruit punch. It's so good. Uh, I don't even care that it makes my lip, my mouth open. <laughs> anyway, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. So, it's been a while since I made a video, and I know you're not supposed to be like, oh, it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, but, you know, it's been crazy at work. Um, so, if you don't know, if you're new here, uh, I work as a freelance camera person. Um, so, I do primarily camera operating, um, AC, which is assistant to the camera, uh, grip, and sometimes sound, and sometimes a position called a swing, where you work several of those jobs in one, because if on a small set, you might be like the grip and the stills photographer, or the grip and the sound guy, or the grip, the sound guy, and the stills photographer, or the, you know, the grip, sound guy, stills photographer, <laughs> and AC, it's just like, it's like a PA would be like a production assistant, which just kind of helps with stuff, but it's like a unskilled position. Whereas a swing is a skilled position that does many, wears many hats. Think of a production Swiss Army knife, which is kind of what I'm good at. Uh, Cause I'm not great at any one thing, but I like have a lot of depth of knowledge. Um, I don't remember where I heard this, but there's a, a term called being a T person. Um, where you, you know a lot, um, you know a lot of things, and then a lot of things about one or two things. So I know like a lot about like composition and lighting and framing, like the actual camera operation would be my depth. But then I also know, you know, sound and lighting and grip and, uh, you know, kind of all these other accoutrements, like live streaming, that makes me a T person. Whereas somebody who's like a really good DP might be an like an L person or an I person, depending on, you know, who you ask, and they like they just have that bar of of competence. Um, so, not to be confused with a U person, I don't even think that's a thing. But a U person, I guess, would have like a lot of depth on two unrelated, seemingly unrelated things. So you could think of like somebody who's really good at technology and camera operation, and they'd be like a really good. You know, live stream person, maybe. Also, I got my hair down today. Look how long it is. It's because I washed it. Because I played hockey tonight. And, uh, it, uh, every time I play hockey, I wash my hair. Because, you know, it gets gross inside the helmet. Um, and that works out pretty well. Because that means I wash it about twice a week. Uh, which I guess you're not supposed to wash your hair every day. Uh, it's bad for it. Um, I don't know. I don't take care of my hair very well. And I'm ready to just, I kind of want to just shave it all off, my girlfriend says no, because then I'll look stupid, um, uh, those are words, uh, I probably would look stupid, but I'm like, so sick of the hair, I think it's a symbolic gesture, I just want to be like, gone, um, uh, anyway, how are you, I already asked that, I, I really do hope you're doing well, um, so, the last two weeks, I have been just non-stop, slammed busy with work doing uh, camera stuff so in the last two weeks I ran sound for a documentary I documented the um, installation of these like massive pieces of art um, there's so they were like 15 pieces of art and they wanted them they go, we went to a private collection um, and the private collection was like in this big estate and they were like we want them there, and like there is in like the middle of a forest. <laughs> like, so the the pieces, like the biggest piece, was seventy five thousand pounds, and so they had two cranes, like uh, like cat bulldozers, like two two like big big fuck off bulldozers, uh, like two three bobcats, like they came on five separate semi trucks, and then there was a different semi truck that moved them from the loading site like to where it needed to go and like the cat bulldozer had to like drag the truck like the last half of the way 
because it was just all like a dirt road they made specifically so they could get to the forest area so that a crane could pick it and put it where it needed to go. And the artist was there supervising the whole thing and it was just like when you look at it and you're just like, whew, man. And you're like, better add another zero to the invoice. <laughs> uh, which I don't, you know, I this it's, I'm having trouble with that. I don't know how to price that job. We never talked about budget. They were just like, hey, do you want to do this? Because like, I know the family uh, because they are philanthropists and they work for, uh, they work for, they, um, they're on like the boards and they give a lot of money to these, um, art galleries that I do a lot of photography work for. So they know me through that. And they're like, Hey, would you like to document this? Like we love your work. I'm like, okay, cool. And they're like, yeah, we'll pay you. And they're like, we never talked about that again. And so I'm like, I don't know what to charge for the Cause like I've already, I was there. Uh, yesterday, well, two days ago now, I guess, because it's after midnight, uh, for 14 hours, and the day before, I was there for four hours, and I'm going back Thursday to watch these things get sandblasted, and, um, I don't know how interesting the sandblasting portion of it will be, I think the move was kind of the more interesting part, but I'll still go capture the sandblasting, um, and then I probably will interview the artist, just to, I don't know how else to, like, have that narrative kind of cohesive piece of like a short I don't know you know because I asked them I was like kind of what are you hoping to get out of this and uh the wife who's the one who commissioned me was like oh you know I don't know like a slideshow and a fake video and uh, you know you'll come up with something and I'm like those are like, I hate that answer uh but it will make it work and so um yeah it's gonna be an interesting thing and so normally when I do work for art galleries, I charge them 75 bucks an hour for per, per shooting hour, because I'm, I'm always, always just doing, like, photos, and I, I know pretty well that an hour of photos will take me, an hour of event photos, that is, generally will take me about an hour to edit, um, or less, and so $75 is, like, a discounted rate, uh, because the art galleries are all, you know, non-profit, and they mostly do cool stuff, and it's, like, a nice thing for the city to have, so I don't want to gouge them, um, and then this is, like, a, you know, it's, like, art going into a, a private residence, so I'm, like, do I charge them my normal full rate, um, which would be, you know, more in line of, like, like, $125 an hour, well, it's weird, because, like, that would be for photos, would be $125 per hour of shooting. Um, but then since there's also video, I charge by the hour to edit video because I don't like editing video. And uh, it generally takes a lot longer. Um, and so like, and it's always unpredictable. Like I could go shoot video all day and it might take me an hour to put together a piece or it might take me like 30 hours to put together a piece from one day's worth of shooting. So you just don't know, so you charge by the hour for that, um, and, you know, when I work for corporations, I charge just a flat day rate of $1,300, um, so it's like, do I charge them my corporate rate, do I charge them the art rate, do I charge them the hourly photo rate, somewhere in the, the middle, the between, because, like, these people have, like, given me other jobs for their, like, they liked what I did for one nonprofit, so they commissioned me to make stuff for another nonprofit, and I gave them, I gave that nonprofit just a direct nonprofit rate of fifty dollars an hour, which was a giant mistake because that ended up being a huge project that took like a whole year, and I only got paid like three grand to do. I I, I definitely spent like a hundred and fifty hours on that project for like, and we just set like a project rate of three grand, and I was like, that was a big fucking mistake. <laughs> so. I don't, you know, obviously don't want to do that again. So part of me almost wants to be like, I just give me whatever you think is fair with the understanding I did X amount of work and then just being kind of happy with whatever I get and then rolling the dice there that it, they'll either pay me well or they might, you know, not know what the work is worth. But, that, you know, it's like at the same time they had you know, two cranes, five semi-trucks, five semi-trucks moving it from New Mexico to Nebraska, and you're like, when the artist, you know, drove here to install them, and they had landscaping done just to support these big, huge pieces of art, like, there's no way just the installation part costs less than six figures, like, there's no way. So, because uh, it was like a crew of, like, I mean, the crew had to be at least 15 dudes to, like, move these things. Um, so you're like, man, that, like, that, there's no way two cranes, two bulldozers, like, ten different trucks. Like, there's no way that's under six figures, right? With, like, all the landscaping that had 
don't even know what, how much money they have on art on the inside of the building. You know, I only saw like a little bit inside their house. And just the stuff I saw was like, I'm like, that's probably like, that's probably another million. Easy. Just in like the entryway. You're like, fuck. Okay. These people have so much money. And you're like, whew. It, it blew my mind the first time I saw like driving. Let's put it this way. Their driveway is bigger. It has more pavement than my entire apartment complex. You just like, I, you know, like I, I've been around a lot of rich people with my job. And so like, I, I feel like I don't get too, you know, starstruck by money, but like, that was just like a different echelon of like, I've been to some nice houses. I've been to some mansions, you know, I've been to some of the biggest houses in Omaha and I've, you know, worked with people like Warren Buffett, um, but just like, just, it's huge, it's just mad, and you're just like, just blows your mind, you're just like, fuck, all right. So I'm not really sure how to, how to go about charging that job with the understanding that I don't want to be someone who, who couches people just because you can't. You know, I think it's like one of those things, so I'm leaning towards the, the art rate, the 75 an hour rate, because it's just... It was like a super chill job of kind of just like, yeah, whatever you want, you know, just come come and go as you please. Um, and I just wanted to do a good job. You know, you just want to do good work. And it's interesting that I feel like I'm entering this new phase of my career. Whereas, you know, because I've been doing this now for uh, full time. I've been doing this for going on 14 years full time. And so... In the early days, the first, let's say, five, six years, um, it was, well, I mean, even like the first three, four, it was kind of just like an inquisit inquisitive child, sort of like, what about this, what about this, and just trying shit and doing a ton of experimenting, and then still experimenting as I kind of found my voice there at year four or five, um, and kind of got my feet a little bit. And then from that phase, I was you know, on kind of just like a hustle, like get on your hustle, get on your grind, get on your hustle, get on your grind. And now I'm kind of in this new phase where like, it's, it's different. Like the hustle mentality isn't there as much. And I think that's just, um, a sign of the times, you know, COVID kind of wiped out a lot of hustle culture and it's more about finding that work-life balance. Cause like now I like won't take jobs if it interrupts hockey most of the time. Um, I'm kind of waffling on that a little bit because I am doing my goals this year or money goals. And I want to be able to, to pay my debts down and get more money invested in my retirement fund because I am late to the party there. Um, so like there's some times where like the job is good enough. That I'm like, okay, fuck it. Let's do that. So I go play hockey one week, especially because right now it's off season. So it's like, ah, it's, it's just pick up, it's just drop it. I can miss them here and there. Uh, with the understanding that I'm not going to miss both drop-ins, you know, that, that's a hard limit. And, uh, but, so there's that, but also at the same time, kind of refusing to do a bad job. So, like, if I'm going into something, I'm not going into jobs anymore where I know I'm not, I, I have a very low chance of succeeding to my standards. Like, just won't do it. And, like, if I don't think there's a reasonable chance I could pull the job off and pull it off well and to my standards that I'll be happy with, I've seen you on the job. And uh, so I don't know what you call that. It's like the wise professional, like, you know, there's, there's, I'm sure there's some Sun Tzu thing in the art of war that's like, you must fight, win, which I know that's a Mr. Miyagi quote, like, don't fight, but if fight, win, something, I had something like that, you know. Um, so... Anyway, so that's a big, old, long spaghetti diatribe. Um, so, I also did sound for a documentary on, uh, there's a thing in Omaha, Nebraska called the Tri-Faith. Uh, so, the church I work at, by happenstance, is part of the Tri-Faith. Essentially, it's uh, a synagogue, a mosque, and a church bought land together. And the original idea was to share a parking lot because they all have their primary worship day on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, which makes a lot of sense and it kind of evolved in this much larger thing of being intentional and interfaith and kind of like you know 
celebrating our differences, but just seeing like we actually have a lot in common, you know, um, with our religions and who we are as people, and kind of learning about the other cultures, and it's it's kind of a cool, un, un, like unique, um, peaceful unity thing. It's it's cool, and so that this person from Harvard is making a documentary about it. And uh, as luck would have it, I know DB, they needed a local sound guy. And uh, all the local sound guys here, there's very few of them. They're all very expensive. Uh, whereas my day rate is a lot lower because uh, I don't have, like I have pro gear, but like I have pro gear for like one person. Like I can, if, if you need one person mic'd up, I got you covered. If you need two people, like, we're gonna struggle, but we'll get there. And if you need like three or more people, I'd be like, "Here's the, here's some phone numbers. You're gonna pay for that." Um, just cause you know I have enough sound gear for my own stuff, uh, which this camera does sound wonderfully if just plugging the mics directly into it. So that's most of what I do. But I have, you know, a nice mixer, and I have, you know, some really nice microphones, uh, so I can still do those jobs. And uh, I don't take very many of them. I just take very low-key, low-stress, like that documentary. Um, so that was fun. And um, what else have I been working on? I've been doing a ton of event photos. I've uh, been doing work for one of the art galleries in town called the Bemis Center. Um, I photographed something called Guns and Hoses, which is a uh, cops versus firefighters boxing event. And I'm still working on those photos. I should have those done uh, tomorrow, today, whatever day it is. It's 2.24 in the morning. I uh, should have those done tomorrow, today, whatever. Whenever I wake up, I'll get back to work and finish them. Um, and then I shot some um, modern dance, contemporary dance. I don't really know what you call it. Um, performance art dance uh, at a different art gallery called the Kaneko, which is a really big um, art gallery, really famous artist named June Kaneko, and uh, his wife founded it, and they have like really modern art and stuff, it's pretty cool, um, which, full circle, that's the, the gallery I work for, that the people on the, it's a, never mind, whole long story, um, so, yeah, that's, okay, yeah, that brings us up to speed, I think. And then I've also been working pretty hard on uh, hockey. Been doing a lot of hockey stuff. Been riding my new bike, uh, the uh, the assault bike, the uh, the Rogue Echo bike. Been putting in some miles on that. Uh, been pr doing some hockey practice. Been playing twice a week uh, at pickup. Having a ton of fun. Getting back out there. My A1C for my. Um, Blood sugar is down. I was at a 9.7, which is really high. Um, and I got it down to an 8.3, which is still high, but not nearly as high, obviously. The goal is to be under 7. So, um, working there, my blood pressure is... in. So it was like hypertension 2 levels. And now it's at like at-risk and normal levels. It's kind of on that bubble. I've had a couple tests that are in the normal range, which is awesome. But most of them test in the at-risk range, uh, whereas before, like, so uh, with uh, with blood pressure, you want to be like it's like 120, uh, like under 120 for the top number and under 80 for the bottom number. And I was, I think the first one I tested with my at-home tester was like 180 something over like 100, which is those are really shitty numbers. Like, not quite like you need to go to the hospital, but like I went. To the doctor for one of my foot ulcers that I had a couple months ago, and they were like, "We can't let you like with this blood pressure. We can't let you leave. Like l legally, we can't. Like we have to intervene. Like this is a level that like we will have to call an if this doesn't come down after the procedure. Like we're gonna have to call you an ambulance. Like you can't leave here by yourself." And I was like, "Fuck, that's not good." So went to the doctor, got on some medication for that, and the medication seems to be working. I'm on uh, more medication for my diabetes, and that seems to be helping. And my diet's slowly getting better. Uh, kind of, you know, I said I had the A1C check on Friday. We kind of had a kind of a bender of a weekend. 
and now we're getting back on the path. And of course, Taco Bell's like, Mexican pizzas are back. And I was like, fuck, I used to love those. So I went and got a Mexican pizza tonight. And that was kind of my last week. I also went and got these big fat uh, chicken sandwiches from a, a local place called Dirty Birds. I think like a Popeye's chicken sandwich, but like 300% bigger. And it's, just, it's like 900% better, tastier, but like also like way so way too much sodium and cholesterol, all that shit. Uh, so kind of had a banger day uh, with some food. And then, you know, we had the pizza, we had the Chinese over the weekend. So now getting back, going to try to get back on like a semi-keto, low-carb diet. Uh, eat more salads, that kind of shit. Um, and just kind of limit the cheat days to just, you know, one cheat meal. Like every every three, four days feels like a good number to, to go for. And it's sustainable enough. Getting back into intermittent fasting. All that good stuff. Oh, man. So much stuff has happened. Let's see. I also bought a new computer uh, yesterday. Actually, two days ago now. And it's supposed to get here today. So I'm really excited. Um, we'll see if it actually gets here today. Because it's shipped with FedEx. And FedEx is notoriously shitty for fucking up shipments. Uh, at least around here. I don't know if FedEx is where you are, but here it sucks. Um, so it's the first new computer I've bought in like eight years. And it's, so when I bought this one, it was custom built and it was top of the line and it cost me like $1,400. This new one is not custom built, but it is top of the line and it cost me $3,500. So I'm hoping it lasts another eight years, but it's got, like I'm going from like a, I don't know, my graphics unit is like a, the NVIDIA 1080, whatever, to the NVIDIA 3080, so it was a pretty big jump. I don't know how much RAM, I think I got 16 gigabytes of RAM in that, and I think my new one has 32 gigs of RAM, that's pretty good. Um, this one has a small, solid state hard drive, and then a big, um, like regular disk drive, and the new one has like a really big solid state drive, and a real, like two really big um, drives, which is awesome, because I go through a lot of data, obviously, uh, but I, so I'm just really excited to have a better computer to render stuff, because my other channel, it's a white noise channel, a lot of those videos are 10 hour videos, and they take fucking forever, like I have to render them in, like I have to render, so what I do for those is like, I'll make you know, the loop, which is kind of the, the base of it, where I'll film stuff, um, which tends to be the filming, tends to be 30 to 60 minutes worth, and then I'll um, render that down, so it's a smaller file size, and then I'll cut that into like a, like a two hour thing, um, and render that, and so that's lower, and then I'll take those two hours and make that uh, loop it, you know, five times to make a 10 hour thing. And then render that. So like each of those renders all together, the process takes, you know, eight, nine hours of rendering time. And so I'm hoping this new computer will really cut that down. Uh, and I'll be able to just do the one, make the hour worth of footage, and then loop that 10 times in the program, hit render, and it'll be done much faster. And if that's the case, then I'll be cranking out the videos over there. Uh, Cause that channel's a little bit bigger. Um, it's got, almost twice as many subscribers as this channel, but like view count wise and watch time wise, like that channel does in a week, what this channel does in a year, like it's just bonkers. Uh, and so I'll be making, I'll probably be making a lot more uh, no talking ASMR videos. So that way I can use those as foundations for loops for long 10 hour videos. So I'll upload those, which to be fair, those have been kind of the most popular videos on this channel. Uh, and I, I do kind of want to get back into making those because I do miss it. I do like the kind of meditative, um, kind of repetitive, intentional noise making. It's, it's a lot of fun. And um, I'm thinking about playing around with um, effects again, which my friend Ian, who is a, a sound guy, um, he recently made uh, the, the NASA black hole sound. He ran it through all of his um, reverb effects. And so... It's like a 30 second clip that goes on for 25 minutes. And I was like, okay, hang on. That's, uh, you got my attention. 
So I asked him if I could use it for my White Noise channel. I did, and it, it didn't get very many views, but it still, like, was fun, and it's like I like doing the weird stuff. Like, I'll still do the, you know, stuff that gets the views, but I am going to keep experimenting and doing weird shit, and I'm, I'll probably post some of it here. Or maybe I'll post, like, behind the scenes and, like, talk about, you know, my thought process and how I built stuff, and uh, then watch someone watch what I did and copy it, and their their videos get millions of views and mine will get like a hundred. Go figure. Whatever. Time you time you enjoy wasting isn't wasted, right? And you might learn something in the process of experimentation. So anyway, uh that is yeah, catching up. That's like two weeks worth of catch up. There's probably a lot of more stuff I totally forgot because so much has happened that like I can't even really remember what I did, you know, the last couple days. It's everything's just kind of a blur and melt together and not a lot of sleep just a lot of work and a lot of churning through the work i also shot a wedding like that's just like a whole other thing so yeah so much stuff anyway uh thank you as always for watching i hope you're doing well and we should be back on schedule i think things are calming down a little bit this next upcoming month so i'm hoping to get back on track of making videos and i want to be making I mean, probably not daily videos, um, but I do want to make, my goal is to make 500 videos this year. I'm only at like 70 something. So I want to get back into that of the daily videos here because that'll make it easier to get to that goal. But anyway, that's all I got for today. I hope you're doing well. And if not, I hope that turns around for you real soon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.